In this problem, we've been asked to draw three different diagrams, all containing two concentric conducting spherical shells. Concentric just meaning that they, that they share a center, so one will be inside the other. According to the problem specifications, the inner shell will have a positive charge, and the outer shell will have a negative charge. The difference between our three diagrams will be in how the magnitudes of those charges compare to one another. We want to draw a diagram for the case where Q1, the inner shell, is greater than the charge on Q2, the outer shell, the case where the charges are equal, and the case where Q1 is smaller than Q2. Let's start with the simplest case, where they're equal, so where Q1 is equal to Q2. The important thing to remember, and this is the key for the entire problem, is to understand the conventions of how electric field lines are drawn. By convention, electric field lines begin at positive charges and terminate at negative charges. So, if our inner shell is positive and our outer shell is negative, then that means the electric field lines must be directed from the inner shell towards the outer shell, kind of like what I'm drawing right now. I'm now realizing I did not need to add so many arrows. If Q1 and Q2 are equal, then that means that any electric field produced by the inner shell terminates at the outer shell, and we don't need to add anything else onto our diagram. But let's talk about the cases where the charges aren't equal. So let's talk about the case now where Q sub 1 is greater than Q sub 2. Here I have replicated the diagram I drew before, using a bit of a magical piece of physics called copying and pasting. But here's the deal. Since the magnitude of the inner charge is larger than the magnitude of the outer charge, that means that the inner shell is creating more electric field than can be terminated by the outer shell. So there is going to be some amount of electric field that continues spreading outside of the shell system even after some of it has terminated at the outer shell. So we can represent that by drawing additional electric field lines stretching further on outside the shell. Finally, let's talk about the third case, where the magnitude of charge 1 is less than the magnitude of charge 2. In this case, the negatively charged outer shell has a larger charge magnitude than the positively charged inner shell. The logic we used for the previous part still kind of applies here, but in reverse. Since the outer shell has a large charge magnitude, that means that all of the electric field from the inner shell can terminate at the outer shell, but because the outer shell still has additional negative charge, that means that more electric field lines can terminate at that outer shell. So we can do the same, we can do the same thing we did for the previous part, but with the electric field lines pointing towards the outer shell, because there is now more room for additional electric field to terminate at this outer shell. And really, that is it for this problem. As long as you can remember the basic rule that electric field lines begin at positive charges and terminate at negative charges, you should be golden. So that is all for this video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. If you have a request for a future video, or you just like to hang out, my Discord server and my other YouTube channels are all linked in the description below. So check those out if you'd like. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye bye